Shepherdess at Harmony Farms here coming at you today with a 10 acre rotational grazing plan for sheep. Now just keep in mind, this is how I grazed this pasture in my area, in my context. Everybody's gonna have a different one and there's not gonna really be any copy and paste solution for a 10 acre pasture plan. But I hope that by sharing what I am doing, it'll help you maybe give you a few unique tools that you can use where you are at. If you guys want a complete list of everything that I used, including sources for the battery, the charger, and even the recharging unit that I used to recharge my 12 volt, please click on the link down below and I will email you a complete list of the infrastructure I used to facilitate this rotational grazing program. Now if you want to see how I rotational grazed this same pasture for winter, I created a video on that as well. But I'm going to run you through how I have outlined this plan for spring. And I'm going to address it in the context of all of the essential elements that I need to run a rotational grazing program, which is power, obviously, for the electric fencing on my paddocks, water, which is essential for running livestock, shade structure, because this particular pasture is very sparse and I live in Texas, and that is right next to water as far as the well-being of animals, and on pasture supplementation, which would be, for me right now, it's just a general mineral that I'm running. So I'm going to outline how I'm getting all of this infrastructure rotated intensively on this 10 acres. Now I'm rotating my sheep once per day, and I'm running about 25 moms plus 20 lambs that we had this spring. So in total there are 45 animals running around and because my ewes are at that really nutritionally needy phase which is the lactating feeding offspring phase um, the paddock sizing does reflect that as well. In fact I had a bit of a struggle with containment as I was grazing about half of this pasture and I was not sizing the paddocks appropriately. Essentially, they were too small, and when you are, have hungry sheep, it does not matter how powerful your charger is, they're gonna jump the line, they're gonna get out. So, a little bit of a tip there, sideline. Now for full disclosure, I am not running 45 animals on 10 acres. I have 30 acres. It doesn't belong to me, it is a rental situation. But this 10 acres is just one of three pastures that I graze in a long rotation. But this pasture, gonna start with the power. I am running just one hot wire along the back of this pasture. And this hot wire services about half of my paddocks. Goes to about here as far as what I can get power off of it. Once I move out to this middle zone, I begin drawing power off of five strategically placed ground rods in the ground. These essentially become my power point, whereas this one hot wire, this one hot line would be my power point for the back side of this pasture. These 
basically act as a cross fence in a way. So that's kind of how I think of it. These ground rods, the way I've positioned them, kind of becomes this imaginary cross fence and then I'm able to draw power off of it and section my pasture off from these ground rods. I am using a Speedrite 2 Joule charger with leads on it that can connect to a 12 volt battery to gather that charge that it needs. The battery is a 12 volt marine deep cycle battery. Marine meaning it is waterproof and deep cycle meaning I can draw the charge down pretty low without actually damaging a battery. I didn't know this about 12 volt batteries but if you draw the power down too low on a non deep cycle 12 volt you're going to ruin the battery and I'm going to spend a lot of money on a short lived battery. But that's what I have right now. And just a little thing I also did not know was stick some sort of plastic barrier between the battery and the ground or your battery power will be drained. But that is my power station essentially and that's my portable power station for my electric fencing is that battery plus the charger on these power points here. Now another thing I want to mention is that I updated my grounding rod system. Now this is something I was not again privy to when I first establish this electric fencing, but your grounding system is as important as your charger, and if you don't have an appropriate grounding system, it really doesn't matter how powerful your charger is. Thank you to a friend who let me know that. What I had was a three foot stainless steel grounding rod. That was about the end of it. What I did was I beefed it up by putting three six foot copper ground rods spaced ten foot apart. And I gotta tell you, that really boosted the power on my charge. So much so that, oops, that is very hot, hot wire. Grounding rod systems are just as important as a good charger. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is water. And what you see right here is a pond. And this can service about one third of the paddocks that I'm running. Now I'm just going to draw out my paddocks for you here, just in a general way as to how they went. So I ran just square paddocks up the back of my pasture as I had that one hot wire line there and the power source would be that high tensile hot wire line. Once I was a little bit more removed and grazing my animals out towards the center of the pasture, I began using these. And this is a tip from a very good grazing friend that I have, and he says this, if you are moving elements every day, the way you can keep from moving them every day is by keeping them in a central location. So when you are planting your pastures, plotting your paddocks, think of a pie and put your water, put your minerals, put anything movable in the center of that pie. So I implemented that advice for this particular pasture. And I imagined these ground rods as the center of my pie, and I ran paddocks off the center here of this pie. Made this sort of, sort of pie looking thing. But that's what I did with my ground rods. And in that, I did not have to move my water all over the place. I did not have to move my minerals all over the place. I moved them about once a week and they would service about one week's worth of paddocks because of this pie configuration that I did. And it looks pretty funny, but it's going to do you a world of good when you are hauling that water like I'm getting ready to talk to you about how I did. So we've got kind of like these crazy spider web paddocks going on and that's how I did it for this one. Um, because the water, as you can see, We've got our one, two, three, four, five, six paddocks that could draw directly from this water source, which was the pond. But I had 30 paddocks going on in here. So I had to figure out how to get water to 24 of the paddocks. And the way that I did that was I just took two to three five gallon buckets with me every time I would switch and I would use that for the day's water. Now the neat thing about sheep is they don't drink a lot of water. So that was an advantage to me. If I was running beef cattle back here, I'd have to get really creative as to how to get a lot of water back there because just for reference, my three steers drink as much as my 45 sheep on a daily basis. So sheep are economizers in that sense and it really helped me as I don't have a lot of good watering infrastructure back here yet. So I would stick my water points 
by the ground rod so that I didn't have to move them a lot. I was bucketing my water down from a watering tank that we filled and I just filled those buckets up off of that tank, haul them when I shifted the sheep. So the next point on the grazing plan infrastructure would be the shade. And this was, I was particularly blessed in this month because this is a pasture that does not have a lot of shade. It makes it really difficult to graze in the small paddocks that I'm breaking it down into. But this month was raining and cloudy like crazy. So I planned these paddocks where there was absolutely no shade where it's in the middle of the pasture. I planned to use those paddocks during cloudy days. Now during the rainstorms and the thunderstorms, I wanted to make sure they did have tree cover. But when it was just gonna be that partly cloudy day, I used a paddock that didn't have any shade. And that worked out really well for me in this particular month. Now I do have some portable shade structures that I will take and pop up when it is just hot and sunny. Those just take a lot of time and a lot of energy to get from paddock to paddock, so I was grateful for this particular month where I was able to plan the paddock usage with some cloud coverage to minimize my workload there. But essentially, just to give you an idea of the shade that I do have in this pasture from trees and such, I've got about three trees here, one tree here, and then this beautiful silvo pasture situation here with a creek running through it. But as you can see, that is kind of how and why I struggled with shade because about two thirds of my paddocks didn't have it. But again, I just used the cloudy days that we had this month to my advantage. And last but not least is an on pasture supplementation that I have to move with the sheep. And right now it's just a general purpose mineral meal that I feed the sheep. They've really been doubling down on that since lambing and the lambs have really been eating a lot of it so I like to make sure and keep it out regularly. I don't have anything fancy like a cafeteria style or this or that. It's just a general purpose mineral meal. It's done fine for us over the past three years so that's what I use. But that will move along with the water bucket. Just simply take it to each new paddock, each new pie center here, as I move the animals. I use a stainless steel bowl and I stick it in a tire so that the sheep won't knock it off and roll it all around pasture. That works out really well for me. So in all, this is how I rotational grazed this particular 10 acres in the spring season during intensive rotational grazing. I had about 25 sheep plus their offspring, so 45 little heads bopping around there. And I would give them about a third of an acre each paddock. Again, you're going to need to be careful about how you translate my particular paddock sizing over to your area. Your grass may not be as thick, your grass may be thicker. So just watch your animals, see what they eat. If they're jumping the line like crazy and if they've eaten into the ground, you probably want to consider sizing up on your paddocks. I hope this helped you guys and I hope that you found some tools here that are going to be useful to you as you rotational graze, whatever you are rotational <laughs> grazing. If you guys want a complete list of everything that I used, including sources for the battery, the charger, and even the recharging unit that I used to recharge my 12 volt, all of the details, please click on the link down below and I will email you a complete list of the infrastructure I used to facilitate this rotational graving program.